What's up YouTube, this is your boy Dr. Zizi and today you must be at a point where you must be thinking which of these exams should you go for? Should you go for the IELTS or should you go for the OET? Well look no further because I'm gonna break the entire thing down. Starting off with the exam format, both these exams are going to be marking you on four different aspects of the English language. It's going to be reading, listening, speaking and writing. Looking at IELTS, reading is 60 minutes, listening is around 40 minutes, speaking is around 15 to 20 minutes and writing is 60 minutes. On the other hand, for OET, reading is 60 minutes, listening is 45 minutes, writing is around 45 minutes and speaking is a 15 to 20 minutes. Session. So both these exams pretty much have similar formats. Moving on to the marking criteria. For IELTS, the GMC requires you to get at least a 7 in each of these modules. So 7 in reading, 7 in listening, 7 in speaking, and 7 in writing. And overall, the 7.5. If you want more detailed description about the IELTS exams, I have done a video previously and I'm going to link it somewhere over here. To pass the OET exams, the GMC requires you at least a B grade in each of these modules. So a B in reading, a B in listening, a B in speaking and a B in writing and the overall score also has to be a B. Now I believe this is a big plus point because in IELTS if you get a 6.5 you fail, if you get a 7 you pass. So the difference between the pass mark and the fail mark is just a 0.5 whereas in OET a B grade is anywhere between a score of 350 to 440. So if you get a 350 you get a pass, you get a score of 390, you get a pass, you get a score of 440 you pass. So the chances of getting the pass mark in OET is much more likely. Moving on to locations. As far as IELTS is concerned, it is more widely accepted by many countries due to which there are many testing venues. Therefore, you have plenty of room and time to book your exams. Whereas OET is fairly new and it's only now grabbing much attention due to which there are less testing centers around the world. So if you do plan to do OET exams, make sure you book your exam early. Talking about the materials to study for the IELTS exam. So IELTS exam is an old exam in the PLAP sphere and more material is available for people to practice. This in comparison, OET is a fairly new exam in the PLAP sphere due to which people tend to have difficulty in finding genuine material to practice the OET exam. In fact, there is a lot of ingenuine material out there where people tend to get hold of these materials, practice and then find out that the OET exam is either difficult or the answers that they wrote are not the answers that are in the answer sheet. So that leaves them confused. So it is highly important that when you are practicing for the OET exam, you get your hands on to proper genuine material and practice. You can find genuine OET material from the OET website. You can go ahead and download from there or buy the examination practice sheets. We at IELTS are now doing OET and we provide genuine material free of charge when they join the course. So if you want to have a look, make sure you go to our Facebook page and send us an inbox so we can take care of that. Okay, let's talk about the writing section. In the PLAP space, we know that, you know, it's easy to get through the first three modules, but end up getting a 6.5 in writing repeatedly. And that doesn't qualify you to sit for the PLAP 1 exam. And we all know how frustrating this can be. So let's break it down in both these exams. IELTS comprises of two writing tasks. Task 1 is usually you have to describe some kind of a graph, a pie chart or some sort of thing like that. Whereas for task 2, they will give you an argument and they will ask you to describe the pros and cons of those arguments. So you have to prepare for two tasks. Whereas for OET, you only have one writing task. So if you master that task, you pass. Uh, unlike OET, IELTS is more general. They can talk about science, arts, literature. So during the writing part, candidates usually have trouble coming up with ideas. On the other hand, OET is more specific to your profession and you have to write a referral, a discharge, a transfer letter. So things that you're already doing in your profession and things that you're more familiar with. So that's why candidates tend to find OET much easier. Let's talk some of the cons of these exams, starting off with the price. Price is something that deters people from doing the OET exam. OET is more expensive, it is around 587 Australian dollars, which is around 440 US dollars, whereas IELTS exam is around 180 dollars. So OET is three times more expensive than IELTS. Due to this, a lot of candidates tend to go for the IELTS exams because it's more cheaper. If they pass the IELTS exam within one go, then yay, you've passed it. But the problem is when they don't, then they have to go through this exam again and again and the cost can just add up. But I have to say, with the price of the OET exam being so high, it is still a better choice for the candidates. It helps the candidates to get through the English language part easily so that they can move on to more important things such as PLAB 1. I personally did the OET exams before my GMC registration because my IELTS had expired and I got through it with a breeze. And yes, I cleared the writing part as well. 
Not accepted for UK visa is another problem for OET exam. After you have secured a job in the UK, you have to apply for the tier two visa for which they will ask you to do the UK VI parts of IELTS exams. So over there, of course, OET will not be accepted. So you have to go ahead and do the IELTS exam again. But wait a minute, the catch is for the UK VI part, you do not have to get very high scores. All you have to get is an overall score of 4.0, which is quite easily achieved. My suggestion is if you're at a very early stage of GMC registration and PLAB, I do not think you should worry about UK VI and visa process right now because chances are by the time you come to that level, your IELTS would have expired anyways, which means you have to do the IELTS exam again. For example, I did my IELTS exams in 2017 and I finished my PLAB 2 in 2019. Then I got my GMC registration in 2021. So my IELTS exams had already expired and I had to redo it anyways. So do not worry about it. Do the exam which is more easier for you and get into the PLAB as soon as possible. So in my opinion, I believe both these exams are fantastic. But if you would ask me to choose one, I will go ahead with OET because I feel it will make my life a little bit more easier to go through this PLAB journey. We at IELTS have now started an OET writing service to help you improve your writing skills. If any of you guys are interested in enrolling for our writing services, make sure you send us a message on our Facebook group and we will take care of it. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure you share, subscribe and like this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.